Welcome back to This Old Nerd, I'm Aya Zaktar, and today's project is based on our new house, of course. We are at a brand new house, and if we're gonna live anywhere, we need to have a wired network. We're not gonna be living just by wireless alone. That's not enough. We need a wired network for some serious speed, and the thing is, this house, well, is very limited. The attic is really tight, and the basement doesn't exist. There's a crawl space, so I can just go under there, go on my hands and knees, and maybe I'll be able to wire the house. But a friend of mine tipped me off to something. Contractors these days sometimes use networking cable instead of telephone wiring around the house. So I went into the wall jack and I found out there was Cat 5E already in the walls. So what I had to do was convert the telephone wiring system into a home network. Now, depending on your house, you're going to need lots of different tools. I suggest at least the following. Get yourself a drill, that's gonna be pretty handy. In tight spaces, I suggest having a screwdriver just in case. A pair of scissors is always very handy when you are making extra ethernet. So have some extra ethernet cable just in case. If you have to make more cables, don't forget your modular plugs. And then you need to have your crimp tool which attaches the modular plugs to the ethernet cable so you have functioning cables. On top of that, I highly suggest needle nose pliers because they come in handy just in general. You'll also need a punch down tool. This thing is what you're going to use to connect an ethernet cable to something like this. This is a keystone. Now the keystone actually gets attached to something called a wall plate. This is the wall plate. Now what you do is you attach the keystone to the wall plate, you attach ethernet to the keystone, then to the wall plate, then you put it all together, screw it to the wall, and it's gonna look great around the house. On top of that, I highly suggest a permanent marker so you can label all your network cables so you know what cable is what. So this kid refuses to be quiet, so now he gets to be held throughout the show. Here's the deal. Now we had to plan our home network. Now it's a lot easier in this case because the wiring is already in the house, we just have to convert it over and change wall plates and all that stuff, we'll get to that. We had to do those, figure out how to connect our router to where all the wires are in the house. Now, everything seems to go really close to the boiler closet. In our house, there's a boiler closet, and it's not directly attached to anything. However, our living room is really near it, so we have all the wires coming in this way. Actually, we're gonna put all the wires into the boiler closet, into a switch, okay? And then we have to connect the switch to our router. Now, our router is over here. So what we gotta do is we have to go through the wall and connect the switch to the router. So this is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna do that with an ethernet cable and some wall jacks and some keystones, and you'll see how that all works out. But if you had to plan everything from scratch, do yourself a favor, plan it all out before you start doing anything. This is a very simple setup because everything's already in the wall, but do your planning. Now to confirm that we actually had networking cable inside the house, we went into the telephone panel. That's what this is. So I'm gonna open this up and show you what we saw. I'm gonna pop this off. Now these are five cables, okay? Now printed on them, CAT 5E. Now 5E isn't as fast as CAT 6. Well, it's not certified to be as fast as CAT 6. CAT 6 does gigabit ethernet speeds and CAT 5E is not certified to do gigabit ethernet speeds, although it can reach that. So we found here, Cat 5E, and you know what? We could rip this out or just connect uh, maybe some Cat 6 and then run it through the house. We've decided to go with Cat 5E just because, well, this house is not that easy to patch. So what we did was, if we come in, we made a hole here, and we routed it into our boiler closet. Now, if you come in over here, you'll see the boiler. This is why we call it a boiler closet. So here are five cables. Now, we're gonna get out of the boiler room just because it does these horrible echoes, but here are our five cables going into our switch. Let's explain how this is set up. Now in a perfect world, we would use a punch down block and that would be our nice tidy way of keeping our ethernet attached to our network, but we decided to use a switch. Now, why did we use a switch? Well, because we had it handy. And so what we did with each of these cables is we terminated it using a modular plug. Now, we've shown you how to do that in previous episodes, so we're gonna show you a clip on how to make an ethernet modular plug or how to terminate a cable into a modular plug right now. How to actually put the end on this thing. We've got our cable, and so there's gonna be a couple of things we're gonna to have to do. Step one, we have to unsheath the cable. So you're gonna take your crimper, and you see it's got a razor there. We're gonna actually place the cable through, you know, about an inch there, and then we're going to turn the crimper. This should create a nice little cut. We're gonna rip this right off. 
So we've taken off the sheath and now we have a bunch of twisted pairs. We're gonna to have to untwist these. All right, so now we've untwisted the pairs, but you can see that the wires are pretty crinkly. So what I suggest you do is take a screwdriver, like I have here, and just run the cables on the screwdriver. So what this is going to do is straighten out the cable, and this is gonna help you pull the cable through the guide. Next, we're gonna actually put these cables in the order that they need to go into the actual plug. Now they're roughly in the order we need them to be. We have the orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, and brown. Now our plugs have two pieces. We have a guide and an actual plug. Now what we're going to do is take this guide, you can see it has tiny little holes in it. We're going to string our cables through this, then we're gonna put this guide into this plug. We're gonna string these wires through this guide. Now this may be tricky to see because, well, it's some fine work, but we'll show you how it works. Start with the orange and white. Now you can see the orange and white through the guide. Now we're gonna put the orange in, that's the top. Now these guides actually have two rows, if you can see that, there's a top and a bottom row. And, um, well, you are alternating. So the orange and white goes on the bottom, followed by the orange, which goes on the top. And Okay, now we have our cables through our actual guide. Remember, the order is very important. Now we're gonna neaten this up. So we're gonna take our pliers. We're gonna grab one end of our cables. And we're gonna hold the guide. And we're gonna pull nice and neat. We want the guide as close to the sheath as you can get it. We should mention this, by the way. You might wanna take a look around where you cut the sheath. Make sure there's no actual nicks in the wire because that's gonna damage the actual integrity of the cable. So what we're gonna do now, now that we've neatened this up, we're gonna cut off these excess ends with our pair of scissors. All right, so now we have a nice trim set of cables inside our guide. Very nice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the guide inside the actual plug. You might have to squish the the sheath so it fits in there. But you're gonna see this go right, right in there. So you can see that. Now we've got our plug and our guide. Now we need to crimp this down. This is why we have a crimper. So we place the plug into the crimper. We're going to push down. You're gonna hear a nice crinkle sound. And you should be able to try to pull this. If it doesn't come off, you've done a good job. If it comes off, try again. Okay, so we repeated that process five times so each cable had its own end, and we attached it to our switch. Now the reason we did that first was because when we go to the wall plates and we actually put in our keystones and our wall plates and all that fancy stuff, we wanna make sure that it works at that end as well. Otherwise, if you do all the stuff around the house and then you come down here, you might not know which part doesn't work. So that's why we did it this way. Now we had to do one more thing though. This switch, come on in. This switch isn't connected to our actual network. There's no router in here. The router is actually in our living room. You can see this extra gray cable. And this gray cable I have to staple up still. It's gotta go up on the wall here. That's connected to our living room router. Now our router's in the living room because that's where the cable guy put it. You can actually see down here, this is the coax cable from our ISP that goes into our router. This cable connects to a wall jack in the other room, which actually has a different keystone. Now, in our house, we did something for the sake of the future. All the keystones in the house are not the same color. Every one of them is white except one. Now, white means you can actually plug in and get internet. The red one means this is the input. This is not an output, this is an input, and that's what's connected to this cable that goes to our switch. That means our switch, our network, everything's all connected once our router is attached to the switch. Now this is what we have on the living room side. So inside the house, we have that red connector. You see that red keystone? That's our input. That's actually going to our router. And below that, we have another keystone for our coaxial cable because if we're going to have this wall plate in our house, now it's not finished obviously, it's not up against the wall yet, but if we're gonna have this in our house, we have to make it look very nice. Okay, so let's show you what the old telephone jacks used to look like. They look like this or one of these. This is the one that's in the kitchen. Back in the days, people used to put a big phone in their kitchen. That's what this wall is. And what we did was we replaced it. Take a look at this. Does this really look that different? No. What I'll do is I'll show you what's actually behind this thing. So what you'll see back here, it's probably one of the sloppier jobs I've done, but here's the keystone 
And here was the cable that was inside. It's blue. You see that nice Cat 5 es written somewhere on there. At least it's written in the telephone panel. It goes into this keystone, which then goes into this wall plate. And you see, it's a nice receptacle. It's very clean. Now what the contractors had done when they built the house is they used those two wires from the ethernet cable and use it in the wall phone jack. The remaining six wires were still attached and actually just wrapped around this cable. So it was pretty easy just taking it apart and putting it onto this keystone. Now it's time to show you how to attach an ethernet cable to a keystone. Now there are two methods when you're doing networking. There's T568A and T568B. This determines how you actually arrange the wires of the ethernet cable in either the modular plug or the keystone. We've been using T568B all of our network. So just stick to one method. Always use one method, be consistent because that's important. Now our keystone comes with a couple of things, a cable tie and two plastic covers. So we'll start with our ethernet cable and untwist the pairs. Then we'll simply follow the T568 instructions printed on our keystone. We bought some really cheap keystones, so hopefully yours have the same helpful information somewhere. Place the wires in the channels. On one side, we'll have from front to back, orange and white, orange, blue and white, and finally blue. On the other side, from front to back, we'll have brown and white, brown, green and white, and green. Now to make the connection permanent, we'll use our punch down tool. Now our punch down tool is a non-impact punch down tool with a blade on the side to cut off excess cable. The punch down tool will make sure the contacts of the keystone are in contact with each wire. Make sure the blade side is on the outside. From there, put on the two plastic caps. Then grab that cable tie to add some much needed security. Now we have to attach our keystone to the wall plate. Our wall plate has the upside labeled, so we'll put in our keystone to match, as in the writing is right side up. And after connecting the keystone to the wall plate, you just have to screw the plate to the wall. As we put in the wall plates throughout the house, we made sure we did something very important. We tested which wire went to which room, and we actually used a permanent mark to write. This is master bedroom, this one says baby's room, this one says kitchen, this one says living room, and this one says office. That way, if there's ever a problem in the future, we know which wire to check. We're in the kitchen, and we're talking about the partner acceptance rating. Now, what's the partner acceptance rating if you're new to the show? Well, it's our term for either the wife acceptance factor, or what you've heard is the spousal acceptance factor, that kind of stuff. It's our little name for it. The idea is if your significant other hates what you're doing, guess what? You're not gonna be doing it anymore because you're gonna hear about it and then your projects are doomed. But in this case, our partner, partner acceptance rating was very high. Here's why. We didn't have use of our actual telephone wall jacks. We didn't use them for anything, okay? Our phone system is via VoIP and we also use cell phones. We don't bother with that kind of telephone landline kind of stuff. That stuff's old. So in our house, the only thing that's changed is the jack itself. The wall plates are very clean, and if you use keystones and you do it that way, no one's gonna even notice the difference. Now we were lucky in this build because the pre-existing wiring was Cat5e. Now what if it was older telephone cable? What if it was something that we couldn't have used for a network? Well, we had several options. One, we could have ripped out the telephone cable, and while we were ripping out the cable, attach network cable to the end of that and pull new network cable throughout the house. That would be one of the options, as, as my kid is making adamantly clear. You want to get a shot of this here? Exactly. We would have done that. Now, if that became too difficult, what we like to do is go right through the walls. Maybe we could bust these open and start an all new system. Problem is we have textured walls and matching the texture could be a pain in the neck. So thankfully we didn't have to do that, but that would have been our real last resort. But if we didn't want to do that and we want to do the lazy man way, we would use Powerline Ethernet. Now Powerline, Ethernet, what I mean by that is Ethernet over power lines has come a real long way in a short amount of time. Now, who do we trust? Who will give us recommendations when it comes to networking equipment? PCMag.com. Now, I used to work there for a while, so they're not paying me to say this, but I know the people there, and I know their network testing capabilities. And the fact is, they test the hell out of stuff. So I would trust their opinions, go get some power line Ethernet adapters for areas that would not be reachable via cable. If you want to know what we're working on for the future, like what other projects are we working on, check out our Twitter page over at This Old Nerd Show. There you're going to find out that we're working on reviving old laptops, rolling your own cloud, all kinds of stuff. 
And when we run into issues, you'll see it on Twitter first. That wraps up this episode of This Old Nerd. Now, if you like the show, go over to the website, go to the This Old Nerd tip jar. We have a tip jar, you can click there. Throw us a buck or two if you like the show. You know what, maybe you don't wanna do that. Maybe you just don't want to give money away. Maybe you wanna get a message on the show. Maybe you wanna to propose to your girlfriend or your boyfriend, or you wanna say, hey, I have a great podcast. Why doesn't This Old Nerd mention it? Well, we're gonna add a sponsor the show section pretty soon, so by the time this is out, Maybe it's already there, so check it out. Uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Like I said, my kid is playing with my guitar, which means I have to be a dad now. Uh, remember to ask yourself this question, though. How's your tech life? I'll see everybody next week.